uh, this in about two weeks will be much more finished. Emily's going to come in next Wednesday, a week from Wednesday, and she's going to help me with it. And um, it'll all be work. It'll all have this surface, the whole thing. So this is what. So it's the wood first, and then it's what you call gesso, and then um, and then over the gesso goes the aluminum, and then over the aluminum goes a wash of white paint, which would be like this. So you'll see. See how metallic that is. So you get a real sense of the metallic uh, quality that happens. Here's this piece. Here, this piece here has to have just begun to have that white wash on it. Well, no, the paint goes first. First, it, what they call gesso, which is like a ground. Then the paint, then shellac, then this. And then I put this paint over it. So it becomes like that, it becomes luminescent. You can almost see how it is luminescent in some ways. You can see the luminescence here, for instance. So all of this here is going to be all this tone. I'll, when I get it all evenly uh, painted uh, so that it becomes like this, all of it, then I'll look at it and maybe I'll have a better sense of what I'll call it and also what else it needs because but right now I don't know what else I need with it. Um, I think I finished it, must have been uh, maybe, maybe, some, maybe the end of a, of a summer, yeah. <coughs> but this piece, also, I had wanted originally to call it Winter Song, and um, I decided that Dawn Light was a better name for it, but it has the feeling of winter in my mind, too, to it. And it's more, it's really quite a bit about aging, about getting older, and that you're going into the winter of your life, you know. to get a jar now. because I really wanted to understand visual information in life. I really wanted to understand what it was like to be able to express something without using words. I was very interested in that dimension of ourself, which really doesn't have much to do with, um, with words, but really is a full form of expression, which people don't, under we do people don't understand in general, compared to words with such a culture of words, that that is what we really live with. So that's what I wanted to learn. And um, these are grape leaves, which I carved in Italy. And you print them? Yeah. Well, no, I rub them. Oh. 
then this is how it's made. It's called a rubbing. People do use gra these on gravestones and all kinds of things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really get. And then some of these crayons you can wet. I don't think this one you can do it, but some of them you can. Okay, so you see there's a leaf? Yeah. yeah. There'll be damage. You see, I don't know if this one you can wet, but I'll try. Yeah, see this this actually. So that's how you get these shapes here. See? Okay. Oh, these, this is a kind of crayon that's water soluble, is what they call it. That's it. What am I going to call it? I don't know yet. Maybe one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven leaves, little leaves or something like that, because this will be at the bottom of this piece when it hangs on the wall. And these leaves will go there underneath too. So this will be in front of this. You don't want to touch that. Uh, no, you can touch it, but you didn't want to touch this to this because then it would come out. Okay. So this, I started this series in Italy. So um, let me show you some of the others. Just have to figure out how to do this. Since I have a very big studio in many ways and a very small one in others, at times like this it becomes very small. Show the black works because I thought that uh, I kept them all together in terms of their design. I wish I could find a dealer in Mexico. I think Mexican people would like my work. And with my name, Asara, they might even think I was Mexican. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> nice. Do you think you might you might go over there and? Exhibit your work? Well, if I find somebody who's interested in, in exhibiting, okay. you'd have to find somebody first who would, who would like to show the work. But you see, it's so easy. I could just roll them like this and just put them on the plane with them. Yeah. So it's not, but, it's not like the big sculpture, which requires so much work. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. If I found a gallery in Mexico or somewhere that did that, I'd be very interested. This is the work from uh, Italy. My show, and I have to do uh, the green packet. See, this one is this. You see? Oh yeah. Because um, I was going to ask you how you got the the lines. So it goes like that. See? Yeah. So, and you made all of those in Italy. Sorry? You made all of those in Italy? Well, uh, some of them were made before and I added to them. This one I made in Italy. Okay. That one I added to. Oh. So, this is easy to travel with. So, and I mean, I like it, I love it. So, I can travel with this, whereas this costs so much money to travel with. Yeah. So, it's kind of nice to have options. Uh, no, it's like a visual diary, but it's um, actually a collage. They're just pages after page, book after book like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. A collection of your work. Yeah, it's like, it's like a collection. It's like a preparation for a big piece? Preparation and also, you know, pieces on their own, but they, they do have that preparation quality. So there's all these different works, oh, which I do also conjunctly with the others. Mm -hmm. So right, well, let me show you a mad dog. <laughs> so let me show you uh, 
one of the pieces I've done. Isn't it? To be an artist? Yeah. Well, uh, where was I reading recently that uh, a very well-known artist was asked by a younger artist uh, if they should become an artist? And I think the artist said something like, I wish I could remember which artist said it, um, well, if you can do anything else, you know, then do it. So I think <laughs> really about making art, you just you become so committed that you can't make anything else.